Hello everyone, welcome to this video. This is part 6 of the dielectric property of solid. Already <laughs> 5 parts are covered of the dielectric property of solid. Previous lecture you can watch from the link given in the description box. In this part, we want to discuss about the complex dielectric constant and dielectric losses and relaxation time and <laughs> device equation. All are covered in this lecture. So, let's start. This is the syllabus in the uh, before that part we already covered that portion uh, from part 1 to part 5 in this part we want to cover up the complex dielectric constant dielectric losses relaxation time divide equation this part we want to cover up in this video uh, complex dielectric constant <laughs> thing in the before discussion we discussed that the uh, this is a dielectric ma uh, material in this material we apply a DC electric field, a DC electric field, then there is a polarization happen and there are three part, uh, pol uh, the polarization have three part, electronic, atomic and the uh, dipolar or orientation, right. Now, if we apply a AC or alternating voltage, this is a capacitor, between this capacitor there is a dielectric material and um, within this capacitive plate, if we apply the alternating field, that is the electric field change with time then the dipolarization or polarization or the uh, dielectric also change with this electric field okay so the polarization and displacement displacement vector is epsilon e which is also periodically change with the time if you consider the electric field like a cosine function then you can calculate the d equal to this uh, just derivative and d can be written as two part uh, d1 cos omega t and d2 sin omega t where d1 is d0 cos and d3 equal to and d1 d2 related with d0 as this and their tan lambda will be that in general this displacement vector actually proportional to the electric field so this proportional constant which is epsilon generally that is for case of dc electric field this is a constant right for AC, this part is not constant. This is also change with the frequency. That is why this is the frequency dependent constant and this is nothing but dielectric constant. Frequency dependent dielectric constant. This is the frequency dependent dielectric constant. Okay. This is the frequency dependent dielectric constant. This arises due to apply of alternating field okay <coughs> and if uh, this uh, electric field has two part that is epsilon prime and epsilon uh, double prime <coughs> okay uh, since this is a complex so we start here just to define is a complex number okay so <coughs> this is the real part and this is the imaginary part if we want to find out the energy loss uh, this d equal to that and uh, tan equal to frequency dependent the inverse the energy loss appears due to second part that the complex part and you know the current will be dq dt and uh, you know 4 pi q equal to d so if you put this uh, q equals to d by 4 pi dq d, d, d dt and d equals to given here d equals to uh, given here where d equals to d1 cos omega t and d2 sin omega t so if you derivative uh, with respect to time you will get this expression okay and the energy loss will be uh, average energy loss what will be the average energy loss you know average energy loss will be w is equals to 0 to t dt and this is 0 to t uh, ie iv dt that is the ie dt and this is nothing but t equals to omega by 2 pi so this is written as omega by 2 pi ie dt and this is t that is capital t and this is nothing but sorry 2 pi by omega, omega uh, 2 pi by omega so this will be 2 pi by omega this is actually written here right uh, now if we put the value of i and e i and e given here this is i and e is the initially taken if we put this value i and e and multiply and then integrate 
we will be get this like of value this is the average energy loss average energy loss this is the average energy loss okay average energy loss and you can see here this energy loss is proportional to epsilon double prime that is the complex part the imaginary part and this is uh, actually proportional to sine part right this one was this proportional to sine part so you can see see here so this <coughs> sine lambda is the loss factor and uh, sorry sine delta is the loss factor and delta is known as the loss angle right i think clear the uh, dielectric constant complex dielectric constant with the uh, uh, energy loss now comes into the dielectric loss and relaxation time <coughs> thing total polarization static polarization will be uh, uh, depend on the electrical part atomic part and dipolar part if we apply the uh, electric field then this electronic and atomic part are change quickly because their mass is low that's why this change is quickly very quickly but for the dipolar polarization takes time this takes time from 10 to the power minus 12 second to few days so this part actually important dipolar moment uh, for the in case of the alternating field because in alternating field that field will change periodically so the dipolarization also change periodically this change uh, occur quickly these two part change that is the electronic and the atomic part will change quickly but the dipolar uh, moment part change uh, it takes time so this effect actually occur in this uh, uh, this effect actually takes time and that is the loss this is the direct loss and uh, uh, this time phenomena is called the relaxation time <coughs> the time required to flip this okay these two part cannot consider because their frequency is very quick they can instantaneously right if you consider so, so we need to consider the dipolar part so if you consider this is a uh, uh, this uh, position of dipole this is two position of this dipole in these two position they are stable if we apply electric field this portion will be lifted out and this is uh, shift uh, because this is positive minus will be attracted and plus will be repulsive so that's why this is uh, uplifter and this is downlifter so the barrier height which is 5 will be reduced in case of a and barrier height in case of b will be uh, greater so the probability to overcome to a to b uh, in case of uh, no electric field this is in case of no electric field this is no uh, electric field electric field this is no electric field the probability per second will be this taken as the phi is the barrier height now if we apply this electric field then the potential for a side will be reduces and for b side will be increases barrier height will be increases so the probability uh, moving from a to b will be this is the change phi and uh, if we separate out new a to the r minus phi by kt taken as p this is the p value and the rest one is the q e a by kt right this is the probability coming from a to b in the opposite side if we probability come b to a this is the value and the uh, new e to the r minus phi by kt is p probability for the uh, uh, without electric field that one so you can mathematically see that the, this is greater than that one so the probability comes from a to b is uh, favorable compared to the b to a so the dipoles wants to <coughs> favor along to the electric field that is because you can see here also this uh, potential high probability so there is a probability to overcome from a to b is favorable compared to b to a right now if we wants to write down the rate equation of the uh, this instant that is the uh, probability that the number of uh, atoms from a side to b side so rate change of this and since the number of a from a side is decreases that's why taken as negative and from b side it will be increases the number in the a side that's why it will be take positive in case of b side also in the reverse form and if you differ uh, different these two you will get this equation now just put the value of this p a b and p b a just put this value and taken the uh, separate out these two and just take uh, this calculation you can see here and integrated you can see here and uh, uh, this equation and 
at t equals to 0 when there is no electric field t equals to 0 means no electric field no electric field then the nb and na are equally distributed that was total number by 2 just put this uh, boundary condition or condition you will get the value of c and put this this is the uh, number of uh, from b and uh, number of a atom separation will be like that so the polarization orientation polarization will be this uh, number difference into q into a just a value of this put this value you will get this expression that is the dipolar polarization in terms of this okay where tau is the 1 by 2 p that is the relaxation time now this tau that is the relaxation time have some importance that relaxation time constant the characteristics of the dielectric material that is the barrier this uh, barrier will be informed from the characteristics relaxation time and easily flipping the dipoles for low activation energy if this phi is uh, low then the flipping a to b b to a is easily can form in both cases relaxation time is short enough along with the high frequency if the frequency will be high the relaxation time will be reduces relaxation time can be obtained from the imaginary part of the dielectric constant dielectric modulus and loss peak we will be discussed in uh, later that is how we can find the relaxation time from dielectric constant or dielectric modulus okay and the loss peak next uh, tau equals to tau zero that is the relaxation time shows the erroneous type so from this type we can uh, consider that is the ac activation energy for the conduction material very predicted from this equation we can predict there is a ac activation energy for the conduction mechanism occur for this dielectric material next this model of equivalent dipole moment <coughs> oriented of the field parallel anti parallel direction so this can be taken as saturation dipolar mode polarization so this is a, a exponentially decay function now the dipolar polarization is taken as and just to separate out you will get this equation so if we derivative this you will get that and this is to put here so you will get this equation now the <coughs> displacement vector will be like that or uh, if you put the d equal to e plus 4 pi p and just taken out you will get this type of expression that is polarization equal to that this epsilon ea is the dielectric constant for the instantaneous phenomena that is you know these two part that is electrical and atomic part is occur instantaneously when the field is uh, applied this uh, occur but the dipolar takes time so this is the uh, uh, epsilon which is instantaneously occur so this is the value of p so if you put this uh, expression in this equation you will be get so in this equation you just put this value you will get this equation and finally you will get the solution of this equation like that okay this is a dipolar polarization and uh, taken the uh, this equation again and put this uh, uh, electric field taken as here and this static polarization and if you put this substitution you will get this equation just follow up this mathematics and the uh, the n is the uh, square of the refractive index refractive n is the refractive index refractive index and the refractive index change, uh, related with the susceptibility susceptibility and the dielectric constant as follow you just put this expression you will be get these two equation that is the uh, real part of the dielectric constant this is the imaginary part of the dielectric constant e is the for uh, di uh, dielectric constant for electric and atomic part and this is the static part this uh, uh, saturated part for the, the dielectric uh, dipolar part this is the dipolar saturated part okay so we get the frequency and time is the relaxation time so this is known as the d by equation if you want to plot these two function these two function if you want to plot just uh, take in this function and at omega equals to 0 you will get this is a uh, yes that is the saturation value and with increasing omega this will be decay because we uh, omega increase that means the decrease so finally decreases and omega tends to infinity if you take omega tends to infinity so 
so this uh, infinity value will be uh, it tends to infinity this will give zero so only this part will be remaining so this nature of the curve will be like that okay in case of the complex part if you just put the value of zero this will be zero for infinity this will be zero so for zero and infinity will be zero so there is maybe a maximum or minimum value so just the de first derivative and then put the get the value of second derivative this is the first derivative and second derivative so for maximum minima we know the first derivative will be zero if we put the value first derivative zero we will get this relation and if we put this value in second derivative we will get less than zero so less than zero means there is a maximum value so the nature of the curve will be like that clear and the maximum value maximum value will be this is the maximum value so in combination if you wants to plot these two that is the real part this is the complex part real part will be decreases and the saturation value epsilon ea this is the value for the electric and atomic part and this is the saturated part and this uh, complex part will be a maximum value at uh, omega equals to omega equals to 1 by tau and this maximum value is like that and if you wants to uh, plot that this is a frequency dependence curve of the epsilon uh, real part and imaginary part and this is the uh, temperature dependence curve for the F uh, real part and the com uh, imaginary part and if you wants to uh, find out the loss tangent of the dissipation fac factor this will be given here clear for any query in must in the contact with my uh, whatsapp number and that's it thank you